Hi, in this video I'm going to explain the difference between a push to make and a push to break switch. On the left hand side I've got a multimeter which I'm going to use to measure the resistance or continuity. I've got some crocodile leads connected to the multimeter and I just want to show you the operation of the meter. I'm going to put the crocodile lead over the screwdriver shaft and as you can see it is a short circuit here. As you can see, this is a low impedance path and you can hear that buzzing. That is the continuity buzzer from this meter. It's telling me the ohms is 1.34 ohms, very low ohms. And there is the buzzer making that noise telling me it's a short circuit. When I remove this, the sound goes away. When I put it back, the sound starts up again. So that tells me that it's a short circuit or a closed circuit. So if I take a regular single pole, single throw switch, and I put the one crocodile lead there and I put the other one over here. Currently there is no sound but when I close the switch you can see and hear the meter is operating. You can hear the buzzer and we can also see the low impedance of this switch, a short circuit. So why I'm doing this is I'm just showing you that when I close the switch it is a short circuit. I'm making the circuit and I'm breaking the circuit. Make, break. Now over here I've got a variety of switches and just by looking at them you would not be able to tell which is a push to make and which is a push to break. Now the first thing is in the word push. So we can see that you have to depress something in order to operate the switch. So all of these have a push system. You can see I'm pressing it down, pressing it down, pressing it. These are all push button switches. Right, so here is my push to make switch. What you'll notice is there are only two connections on this particular one. So this is a single pole, single throw switch. I'm going to connect the meter to one leg and the other side to the other leg. Right, so over here we have the symbol. You can see there's the push button and there is the contacts or the poles. And as I depress this platform, that shorts out these two contacts, therefore closing the circuit. So as I push this down, you can hear my meter is saying it's a short circuit. So as I push that down, what happens is that platform touches there. And what happens when we've got a short circuit? Current can now flow going through the siren. We are hearing that noise and then it goes back to the supply. So we are hearing the speaker, the buzzer making that sound as I close the contact. Note, I'm closing the contact by pressing the button. Push to make the circuit or make the contact. Open circuit. Close circuit, open circuit, close circuit. Right, let's have a look at the push to break. Right, now I have the meter here already and you can see it says 1.45 ohms and you should be hearing that buzzing. Why? Because the switch in its resting position is already a closed circuit. So in order for me to open the circuit, I need to depress the switch. See the meter is now showing an open circuit. Closed circuit, open. Closed open. So in this case you can see the symbol. It's a closed circuit when the switch is at rest. The switch is at rest. Nobody's touching the switch. It is a closed circuit. Current can flow and that is why we are hearing that siren or that buzzer making that sound. Now when I depress the switch I'm breaking the circuit. I'm actually pushing that platform down and now I am disconnecting these two poles which means current can no longer flow and therefore this is now an open circuit. Closed circuit, open. Closed, open. Right, now just some comments. Are all switches that look like this push to make and push to break? No. For example, this is actually a latching switch. Look at this. Closed circuit, open circuit. Closed, open. While the push to make and the push to break switch generally don't make that sound. Right now when I press the switch, yes I did push it and it made the circuit. Notice that when I let my finger go it stays in that position. So this is not a push to make. While this on the other hand, when I press it, it's changing the state. When I release it, it's changed the state again. So if this is a push to make and this is a push to break, both of them require the push in order to enable the push to make or push to break function. As I release it, they go back to their original position. This on the other hand does not. When I press it, it stays like that until 
I rock it the other way. Here are some examples of push to make switches which you have around your house. For example, your mouse. As you depress it, you're making contact. As you release it, you're breaking contact. Making, breaking. Same as your remote controls to operate your garage or your doors or your car. For example, when I depress the button, I'm making contact. When I release it, I'm breaking contact. Look at the laser pointer button. As I depress the button, you can see the laser shining on my hand. It's only on when I hold the button in. As I release it, the red light disappears. Appears, disappears. Right, thanks for watching and cheers.